Today's commencement speaker is Adolfo, Adolfo Daniel Rinaga, an attorney for Legal Aid of Nebraska, a nonprofit organization in Scotts Bluff that provides legal representation to victims of domestic violence and elder abuse. Mr. Rinaga graduated from Shadler State College in 2014 with a legal studies major and a criminal justice minor. He then earned his law degree from the University of Nebraska, where he worked with UNL's Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program, a service designed to provide free tax preparation for low-income families. After being admitted to the Nebraska Bar, Mr. Renaga began his career at Legal Aid as a staff attorney for raising effective advocacy for crime victims' health and safety. Outside of his work with Legal Aid, he serves as a vice chair for the Nebraska Latino American Commission. As the child of two Mexican immigrants, Danny said he is pleased to serve on the commission that links state government and the Hispanic Latino communities of Nebraska. Please join me in welcoming Adolfo Daniel Renega. That hat's made out of velvet, by the way, so I'm going to keep that off. Well, welcome everybody. I would like to begin by congratulating today's fall 2019 graduates. Perhaps you find yourself today uh, graduating a little early, or perhaps you find yourself here today graduating a little late. Uh, maybe today's commencement uh, ceremony represents a culmination of many frustration-filled nights, uh, or maybe today represents the branch, a branch sprouting from your family tree as you become the first person to graduate from college. Or maybe you're here begrudgingly as you're not much for the pomp and circumstance. But uh, don't worry, I wasn't much like that either and we'll talk about that today. Regardless of what camp you find yourself in today, uh, you all have a lot to be proud of today. So when I was thinking about uh, what I should say today, uh, I was a bit unsure of where to go with it. And uh, so I did what I often tend to do uh, when I'm sure about something, and I asked my wife. Now, uh, my wife, um, hold up, is a fountain of beauty and intelligence and always knows what to say. She's the most caring and compassionate person I know. And uh, which camera has the live stream going? That one? Okay. My wife couldn't be here today, so she said she was going to be watching the live stream instead. So, shooters got to shoot, right? Uh, so, uh, you know, I asked my wife, her and I graduated uh, in 2014, and I asked her, what was the one thing you wish someone would have told you when you graduated? And um, she, in her infinite wisdom, said, I wish somebody would have told me that things get harder before they get easier. So I thought about it and I had to agree. You see, uh, back after the summer that I graduated, I had a friend who uh, convinced me to run a marathon. Uh, well, regardless of you believe me or not, I ran the marathon. Uh, back then the dad bod was not quite so pronounced. Uh, but what I didn't realize at the time was that that marathon would go on to be symbolic of what the next few years would be like for me and my family. A long, exhausting grind with random people cheering you on and telling you to drink more water. I've often thought uh, if I was going to write a book, I'd like to title it The Art of Grinding. Now, the more I thought about it, the more I realized I'd probably inadvertently end up on MTV or some machinist tutorial video or something, uh, neither of which my mom would be particularly proud of me for. Uh, but, you know, this idea of grinding, of rolling up your sleeves and putting your nose to the grindstone, I think is a concept that is often lost on us, uh, especially in this uh, instant gratification society we live in. My, my pastor likes to use the phrase, long obedience in the same direction. And I think that we could apply this phrase to many aspects of our lives. When we think about where we want to be in five years or even 10, 15, 20 years, we often overlook the fact that legacies 
are often built on longevity. A while back, I was actually uh, reading scripture, and in the Bible, there's a story about a city called Jericho. Now, Jericho was a city that was heavily fortified by stone walls all over. And uh, in this story, God tells a guy named Joshua uh, that he is going to help the Israelites conquer Jericho, but he needs them to walk around the city seven days. Now, if my Amazon packages took seven days to get to me, I'd probably stop buying from Amazon, right? I mean, why else would my siblings pay for Amazon Prime? I mean, uh, but what makes this story more interesting is the fact that we're never given any indication that Joshua ever told the Israelites just how long they would be walking for, right? Life's a lot like that. We don't always get to know how long the pain is going to last. We don't get to know how long we have to grind away at something uh, before something gives. But I'll tell you what I've noticed to be true most of the time is that the things that require a lot of work are typically worth it. Things like a healthy marriage, raising kids, having a fulfilling career, friendships, financial security, and yes, even a college degree. And most of those things are hard at first. Take it from me, uh, about a month after I had ran that marathon, uh, my wife and I had our first son. And then about a month after that, uh, we packed up our things and moved to Lincoln so that I'd go to law school. Pro tip number one for today, don't start law school with an eight-week-old baby. Remember that one. So, things were hard when I left Shadron. Law school's not a place you go to have fun and sleep a lot, uh, for those of you who are wondering. In, in fact, I was so convinced uh, that it couldn't get any worse that me and my wife decided to go ahead and have another kid while in law school. Two weeks before finals, in fact. Pro tip number two, don't have a baby two weeks before finals in law school. But it was one foot in front of the other, right? Putting in the long hours, pushing myself farther and harder than I ever had before, going and going until finally I reached the finish line. There were times when I felt like I n it was never going to end, and there were times where I felt I had to ask myself if I uh, could or even if I wanted to keep going. But let me tell you, when I was finally able to help my first client get out of an abusive relationship, it all suddenly was worth it. It's easier now. In fact, uh, we got so used to sleeping that uh, my wife and I recently decided to have a third kid. Um, pro tip number three. No, I'm kidding. Have kids. Kids are great. Let me also just briefly say this. There may be times in your life when it really seems like there may be no way out, when those walls are just never going to fall down. If any of you ever get to that point in your mental health, please, please just talk to somebody. There are hotlines available, there's online chat functions, and there's even a lot of local resources, but whatever you do, please, please do not give up on lap six. Now, one thing that I found out as I grew up, but wish somebody would have told me earlier, was this, do the things that scare you. Now, there are natural fears, and I'm not advocating for everyone in this room to go full on Bear grills and start jumping out of helicopters and eating raw animals. I'm talking about the kind of fear that holds us back from being everything we work so hard to be. I actually brought a couple of mementos that I've kept over the years that help me or remind me of this, this very philosophy. Oh, and you know how I mentioned uh, earlier that I wasn't really much for uh, celebrations or awards and things like that? Well, my, my perspective or my opinion has definitely changed over the years. Um, and that actually has to do a lot uh, with the Israelites we spoke about just a bit ago. Uh, there's another story in the Bible that talks about uh, the Israelites where God instructs them to put stones in this particular river. And the reason for that was so that when their children passed by and asked, what do those stones mean? Uh, they could remember a time or re recollect a time where they had a victory or some sort of miracle. So now what I try to do is remember those times that we have some sort of victory. You know, it's, 
it's really easy as humans, we're, we're pretty forgetful. And it's really easy to get down on ourselves and even question our self-worth. But when we look at that diploma on the wall, when we look at those pictures of our kids or whatever your victory is, we're reminded that we're capable of doing great things. So like I said, now we, we try to do uh, something to celebrate when we have some sort of victory like that. Uh, for instance, when I graduated from law school, uh, I took my wife to the number one place on earth that she wanted to go, the wizarding world of Harry Potter in Universal Studios, of all the places, right? Pro tip number four, if you stay at one of the uh, hotels there, you get early access to the park. So there's a free travel tip for you, remember that one. Um, so the first thing I want to share with you guys today is actually this uh, harmonica. It's a uh, marine band harmonica uh, made by uh, M. Honer out of Germany and God knows what key. Uh, but if there are any uh, harmonica aficionados out there, come find me after this and tell me that this is worth some sort of money. Please, that would be, that would be helpful. But uh, this harmonica actually represents one of the first times that I did something that was completely out of my comfort zone and legitimately scared me. You see, when I was, uh, I believe, a high, uh, senior in high school, there was this uh, competition called the Stars of Tomorrow. It's basically a talent show. I think Alliance still does it. And um, although I can't remember exactly why, uh, I decided to enter this competition. And uh, I remember thinking at the time, crap, now I gotta think of a talent, right? Uh, I had been teaching myself to play guitar at the time, and so I knew like four chords, um, and I remember seeing this, this harmonica in a junk drawer. Uh, and so I went out, you know, went full Bob Dylan, got one of those harmonica holders that kind of looks like, like the old school braces with the headgear. And I decided to do a guitar and harmonica song. Now, uh, I, I probably looked pretty ridiculous that night um, since I brought in my classical style of guitar. I didn't even have a case for it, had no electronics. I uh, dragged it in uh, with a harmonica that I didn't know how to play. Um, and so I just decided to go for it. So, much to my surprise, I ended up taking second place. And for the record, I do recall that there were more than two contestants, for those of you who are wondering. But that was one of the first times that I went out and did something that legitimately scared me. And from that, I was able to overcome a lot of anxiety about talking or being in front of people. Uh, a skill that would come in handy later in life, as luck would have it. The next thing that I brought to share with you today is actually this uh, padfolio that I have. So this padfolio kind of just looks like a beat-up office accessory. It's navy blue. Um, it holds a regular-sized legal pad in it. It's got some tape. It's holding the corners together. I bring this with me to various meetings or speaking engagements. But this pad folio is actually pretty special because uh, probably none of you could buy it. It's, it's only or was only available to Senate staff members. You see, between my junior and senior year in Shadron, I did another thing that uh, really scared me and I applied for and was accepted into an internship that I was utterly unqualified for. I cannot stress unqualified enough, right? Again, much like the talent show, if I think back about uh, why I decided, I'm not actually 100% sure why I decided to apply for that particular internship. All I remember is that as the spring semester of my junior year was coming to an end, I got a call from uh, then Senator Mike Johan's office asking me if I wanted to spend my summer working in DC. And although I didn't really know how it was gonna work out, I decided to say yes. And so my wife and I packed up our clothes and almost nothing else, and we moved to DC for the summer. So that internship was perhaps one of the most transformational experiences of my life, but not probably for the reason most of you are thinking. I have to admit, it's, it's very awe-inspiring to walk through our nation's capital and to just stand in the old chambers of Congress where some of our nation's greatest debates took place. That is something that's very, very special. And uh, when you're an intern or a staff member, you actually get a badge that lets you go see parts of the Capitol that most people probably won't ever get to see. 
Pro tip number five, if you're planning a trip to DC, call your congressman or senator and you get a private tour. It's a lot better than the, the public tour. Remember that. And so although being exposed to policy on the brightest stage was awesome, the thing that made this experience so special was what it meant for me to even be there. During uh, the summer, at least when I was there, they did a lecture, lecture series where they would bring in uh, different people like political pundits, rising congressmen or women, or uh, some sort of world ambassador. And uh, during that summer, one of the guest lectures was uh, Stephen Colbert. Now, uh, you can imagine there was a lot of interns wanting to see Stephen Colbert present, and so they had to use one of the bigger auditoriums there in the Capitol that holds, you know, a couple hundred people. And so, me and the other interns went, and we sat in these uh, theater-style seating, and I remember in this dimly lit room just seeing uh, rows and rows of the back of people's heads. And for some reason, all I could imagine as I was looking at the back of those heads was rows and rows of sugar beets. Now, one thing you should probably know about me is that uh, my parents are originally from Mexico. Uh, they immigrated here in the United, to the United States uh, in their early 30s. Um, and the re but one of the big reasons we ended up here in western Nebraska was because of the migrant work. Uh, and there was a popular circuit that they would run. They would work in California, fruit and uh, vegetable fields, make their way up to uh, Nebraska and clean beets and beets, uh, and then make their way up to Washington to um, work the potato harvest. Um, so when I was about, uh, up until I was about 17 or 18 years old, uh, I spent my summers typically working six hours or six days a week, uh, 10 hours a day, just going up and down these sugar beet fields, uh, cleaning them by hand, you know, using a garden hoe. And you would just spend all day walking up and down these rows of sugar beets. And uh, you know, you would get cold, muddy, and wet in the morning, and then by the afternoon you were dying of heat and covered in, covered in dust. And so, as I was sitting there, in the literal capital of the greatest nation on earth, some nobody from Podunk, Nebraska, son of Mexican immigrants who had just come here to try to carve out a piece of that American dream for their kids, surrounded by some of the brightest minds from all over the United States, and all I could see was those sugar beets. All I could remember is from where I'd come from. I was in awe of the fact that I had gone from walking those dusty roads plowed up by tractors to strolling through the halls of the world's greatest, greatest decision makers. This folder is a reminder to me that the greatest stories in my life will not be written in the ink of fear or self-doubt, but rather in that of confidence and bold determination. You guys are capable of much more than you think you are. You guys are capable of much more than you think your circumstances will allow. Now, lastly, I brought this envelope. Uh, this envelope was sent to me by the Nebraska Supreme Court. And in this envelope is a uh, written opinion or an order uh, from a case that I recently argued in front of the Supreme Court. Now, I'll admit, I'm a little uh, green as an attorney, as they would say. I've only been practicing law for a couple of years. Some people practice law their entire lives, and it's not entirely sure. They always know what they're doing. Uh, that's why we call it the practice of law. Uh, no one ever truly masters it. But to say that I was a little intimidated when I found out that I would be arguing my case in front of the, the Nebraska Supreme Court would be a little bit of an understatement. Um, but I decided to take on the challenge. I did all the research, I read up on everything that I could about appellate advocacy, and I wrote a kick butt brief in support of our position. And just as I had started to feel a little bit more confident that we were going to win, the Supreme Court issues a decision in an entirely different case that has similar procedural facts that our appeal had raised. And then, a few weeks before oral arguments were supposed to happen, they issue a show cause order that basically states, in light of this recent decision that we issued, that you had no idea was coming down the pipe a year ago when you filed this appeal, tell us why we shouldn't throw your case out. 
And suddenly, I didn't feel so confident, right? But I'd been down this road before. I knew that all I could do was put my head down and do the work. And I can tell you, when our case did get called, I gave those seven justices uh, 10 minutes of pretty kick-butt legal argument. You know, uh, when this happened, when I found out that I was going to be arguing this new, this new issue, I had to laugh a little bit because the issue that was being raised now was a question of civil procedure. And it's funny to me because when you're a first-year law student, everybody takes a class called civil procedure. It's entirely long course, nobody likes it, but everybody takes it. You want to guess how well I did in civil procedure? Not too well, not too well. So when I found out that the first, maybe last time that I was going to argue in front of Nebraska's highest court would be on an issue of civil procedure, something that had plagued me for so many years, couldn't help but notice the irony. But as I prepared, that irony that I had thought about soon was replaced with a sense of purpose. For those of you who are curious, I lost. But this envelope represents a time when I chose not to accept a trace of apathy in my attitudes or actions. You cannot give in to the temptation of complacency or cower in the fear of opportunity, in the face of opportunity. You gotta do those things that scare you. Now, as a, as a final note, I just uh, wanna speak quickly on the subject of justice. I, I wouldn't be much of a legal aid attorney if I didn't at least do that much. We live in a world where the ideals of justice are uh, very often perverted or tainted by what we see on TV or hear in the news, but I think that is a dangerous road to travel on. Our country seems to be constantly overwhelmed by fractures that go to the issues of equity and fairness. And when we see those type of issues on a national or even a global scale, it's really easy to shrug our shoulders and think that we can't possibly personally affect change. But each one of you will have some sphere of influence where you guys will have a chance to either demand or deliver justice. Maybe some of you are going into law enforcement, in which case it's gonna be your job to uphold the principles of justice. Maybe some of you are planning on working as some sort of public official, in which case you're gonna take an oath to uphold the principles of justice. Maybe some of you are actually going into education and you're gonna have the opportunity to advocate for the fair treatment of a child. Or maybe, just maybe, you're gonna be sitting enjoying dinner with your friends and you're gonna witness someone be mistreated because of the color of their skin. Whatever road you guys decide to go down, I would urge you to seek justice. I want to congratulate all of today's graduates one last time and thank Shatter State College for this uh, honor to be here on this very special day. Uh, I wish you the best of luck in your next adventures and I want you to all go out and show the world what it means to be a Shatter State Eagle. Thanks.